Welcome back everybody to dad dating. We got one more date in us for this stream. We're gonna date Hugo Obama. He is a, a middle school teacher, a high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're on here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash, I know and I'm sorry. On a Friday night, he is most likely to brew some strong tea and paint miniatures. Warhammer, bro! Uh, if you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A remembrance of past things by Marcel Proust. What are your turn-ons? Muscles. What did you want to be when you grow up? Movie stir. What's your favorite genre of movie? Documentaries on art history. What is your ideal date? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch in comfortable silence. That is not my ideal date. My glasses, I will never leave without them. Actually, I forgot them at home a lot. Um, I worry about what people think, people who are against e-readers and more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Dad date with Hugo, the teacher. I navigate to Hugo's dad book and Type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. I definitely wanna hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going to, oh wow, that's Joseph's voice. But I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I completely understand if you don't want to make it or can't make it. But if you're... If I'm going to be honest with you here, it's a the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be in. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Martin Pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? Aww. Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Ugh. Everyone sucks. No self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 hours a week. Long vision, starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s, Bob. Middle schoolers should be avoided at all. Hmm. What was your middle school experience like? I didn't like it. I had my first crush in middle school and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me and I'll never forget. Huh? What'd she do to you? Uh, she was not a girl. <laughs> I stare off into the middle distance, remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remember the bitter betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham, him making me eat dirt in front of her. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't want to talk about it. Uh. Sir, middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Uh, oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium? Just wanted to know what I was in for. Mm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Mm. The last field trip I got to go on was the clam chowder factory. They didn't even get us clam chowder! They got us square pizza! At a clam chowder factory! Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? <gasps> no, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Hmm. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I got, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What? Are you worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow your hole? Don't you put that fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins? Yes, they have penguins. Yes! That's subtle. Penguins outweigh fear, outweigh fear of the ocean. I sit back down to the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. Why is she not going to school? <laughs> I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. 
Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. <sighs> Hugo jogs up to me looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! Uh... It's been a debacle all morning. We're short-handed, and most of the kids won't stop screaming. As I'm sure you know was the case with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Oh! Great! Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over there. 10 kids for two guys? That's very manageable. Very manageable. 10 kids? That is high. One person can do 10 kids. Highly manageable. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground, playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Um. Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo, then they go back to texting. At least they're quiet? Um. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. <laughs> Gross. Sorry, I burped. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school. Oh. We'll see. The classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out massive, stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you cannot borrow a pencil. You should have brought a pencil. In America, everyone should have pencils. These kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. <laughs> What's in the packet? Mm. Honestly, it's just busy work, so the kids can have a moment's work free. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for 10 minutes and to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Oh. <laughs> it gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points out to a points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Ah. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Hmm. Their spines are venomous, too. Nature is hardcore. Oh! You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Hey! Lots of stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh! Tissue necrosis. Cool. Ah! Nature is wild. Man, if Hugo seems to know a lot about fish, I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Hmm. That one? Yeah, that's the... Blue-nosed wigglyfish. Humphead wrasse. Blue-nosed wigglyfish. Hmm? <laughs> yeah? Did you know that? Uh... Psychiatric fish tree, political fish tree, paranormal fish tree, yeah. Psychiatric. This is the one spe only species of fish known to develop clinical depression. Oh. Wait, are you serious? <laughs> serious is a heart attack. We're talking about fish here. There's no time for class. That's a clownfish. <laughs> oh no. I was clearly joking! Right. Uh, I didn't save it. <laughs> we leave the kids here in the room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive floor to ceiling aquarium. I'm so upset. Why did he not get I was joking? I was just pressing the joke harder. Uh. The kids begin to take, trying to take selfies with the sharks. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, viewing the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal proteins, he looks completely peaceful. 
He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Hmm. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? I'd rather stare at you. We can learn a great deal from the Mother Ocean. Are those two sharks kissing? Something tells me he would not appreciate this forward reaction. And I think this is what he would appreciate. Great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It truly is fascinating to be able to observe it in such a or observe it in such a settling place in a setting such as this. Jesus Christ. Now I've done fucked up. That's very astute point, Daddy. We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moistured hands. Hugo rolls his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to put some rays down, you guys? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun and informative. Don't make fun of me, but... I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling that they'll probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand in the cold water. I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. Feels like slimy leather. Fun slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach the same anemone. I pulled away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away sometimes. Wait, that girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Hmm? Our backpack's usually wet. <laughs> Hold on. Susan! Susan, get back here. Hugo runs after a middle schooler catching her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in that bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in that bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he may need a bad cop. Look, kid. We don't have times for games here. That's an easy five to ten in a clink. I'm not afraid to hit a child. <laughs> oh, shit! Uh, this is the funny one. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink. I had a bud go down for that once. He came out a changed man. Said he missed the bars. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Hmm? Yes, well, I am. Can you please put that back down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Sweet Manchego! Sweet Manchego? Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles across the floor and an employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan! What was your plan? I was trying to free him! To where? Outside? Where he was going to die? Uh. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and hands where we can see them. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the ah. shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surrounds us. Oh! Look over here. Hugo points to some seahorses gathering at the bottom of a fish tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. It's a dude! The dude oh. seahorses give uh, birth. That's actually a male seahorse. Seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. Right? What the fuck, that kid? Susan's a fucking B-I-T-C-H. 
Yeah. A low memory from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Mm. Fun fact. Male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. Mm. I wonder if they had their kids. Oh. I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years, too. All however many thousands of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Yes! It's not really my specialty, but uh, I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see penguins? Oh, yes. We get to see the penguins. Hmm. Hi, Drizzy Dresser. How's this mic? Hell yes. Penguins! Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. P.S. The penguin exhibits always smell really bad. Like, so much like bird poop. Bird poop is smelly. Maybe just bird are smelly. Either way. Fine. Penguins are smelly. The end. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Huh? Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god. There's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding! It's very bad! Is it one of ours? <sighs> it most certainly is. Molly Henderson. Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door with the exhibits ex ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop it before the staff sees and bans our school for life. Hugo looks around. Eh. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puppet exhibit and dresses the entire uh. room. Everybody! Everybody! Everybody. I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards uh. Hugo. Um, ha! Ah. Here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about the penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst! Hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. I can't be in here! Neither can you! I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. I don't know. Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured? Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go, they deserve freedom! Where are they even gonna go? They're gonna live in my closet! Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Men to the with penguins! I don't know. Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions, they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? <laughs> Card is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Lay down the law. Briber, try to relate to her. Gonna hit with that fat save. All right. Try to relate. I think back to the time I released all the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a disaster. I was six, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know, life can be cruel. Money! Give me money! I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well give it to me right now! I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have. Examine it each bill. Okay, well I have $12 and some change. Also, there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other eight later and we have a deal! We move to the shake on our agreement, but before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Oh my god. Oh no! Block that bird! How do I do that? Oh, oh. <laughs> this is adorable! I'm hitting.
using my own hands. <laughs> boop. 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 Can I charge it? Is this all I've got? Get out of here! Go away, penguins! No! Bad penguins! Get the fuck out! You evil penguin bastards! I don't have any fish! Go away! Stop it! Stop it! Seriously, seriously, fuck off. Penguins, I will I will end you. No! 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 I'm trying to bribe that team! <laughs> How do I bribe the team? How do I bribe the team? Oh my gosh! Penguins, no! Penguins escaped! No! I bribe the team! I bribe the team! No, save the- No, the penguins are gonna go! You bitch! <laughs> Four whole penguins! That was OP and unfair. I am upset. Whew, glad that's over. It's just in time, too. It looks like human- Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Mm. And that's why I think the penguins are one of the best animals in the world. Few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everyone stares out, starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs hmm. over. Molly, what were you doing there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega! You realize that penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, it was a thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. You're a fuck, and no one likes you. You owe me eight dollars! Whoa! What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. I want to do that again. Would anyone judge me if I did that again because I want to play that game again? <laughs> they would. Molly runs off towards Susan so they can compare animal thief notes. Oh! You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh! Daddy Vox, did you just bribe a child? I bribed a child. You can't play by the rules when there's penguins on the line. Listen, man. We've all done dark things in our life. I'm not that young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. That person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe children to save a penguin. But me today knows differently. I only wish I could go back. Oh. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. He did not approve. This was a terrible date. I wrecked it with Hugo. Just like, I thought I did bad with Joseph. I got fucked. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids unload on load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Oh. Hey, Daddy. Thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Mm. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? Who the fuck doesn't love cheese boards? That sounds fucking great. There's nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. Great. Well, I gotta go. Make sure those kids don't steal any more penguins. See you around. <laughs> I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the pan is at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. Huh? What you up to tonight? Just throwing some homework. How's the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. <gasps> oh, we've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. Yeah! You got to go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It's nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. Oh. I'm surprised you helped complete a covert op. He's usually kind of a... Kind of a what? Hey. Kind of a stuck in the mud? He's actually really cool. I had a pretty good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go crash like a mofo. Mm -hmm. You meant take a nap? There is a difference. You will learn when you become a father. Date complete. How terrible did I do? He's such a tweed. Tweed is actually one of. That oh. was exemplary. No, it wasn't. I sucked it up. That's the end of that date. <laughs>